am uncomfortable with the Me Too movement. I believe that there is more than two sides to a story, more than black and white, and tonight I'd like to present a nuanced review of the Me Too movement. The movement was founded in about 2006 by the American civil rights activist Tarana Burke. She wanted to create a movement to support women and girls from marginalized communities who survived sexual violence. The essence of Me Too couldn't be simpler. Empowerment through empathy, giving a voice to the silenced, and creating strength in community. The movement entered the world stage in October 2017. The rallying cry of Me Too encouraged victims and survivors to come forward. It created a worldwide forum where people could share their experience, create conversation, educate, but also raise awareness about the silence around sexual violence. Between October 2017 and September 2018, the hashtag was used 19 million times. New York Times Magazine's Person of the Year, 2017, was simply called the Silence Breakers. A group of men and women who came forward to share their personal story about sexual violence and blaze a trail for thousands to follow. It didn't take long for the first naysayers to speak up. Op-eds in large newspapers and a letter signed by 100 French women claimed that the movement had gone too far. After the retweet, after the like, after the Insta shot, what's next? Who is driving the movement? One of the criticisms leveled at the movement is that it lacks direction and an end goal. The movement was gained in momentum and in popularity because it was strongly supported by a group of established Hollywood actresses. However, because these women were successful, they had a choice to play by their own rules and stand up for what they believe in. A luxury not everyone can afford. Over the past 12 months, Me Too has been part of the relentless 24-hour news cycle. While some people may have found strength and community in Me Too, others felt traumatized, triggered, and overwhelmed as they had to relive their own painful experiences. Social media play by their own rules, and the tools of online justice are blunt. There's no fair process, no due hearing, there is no level playing field, and the outcomes are really right and reasonable. As the movement has gained in momentum, it has lost in definition. It is less clear what Me Too stands for nowadays. The focus seems to have shifted from sexual violence to bad dates. Clumsy flirting is not the same as sexual assault. Sexual aggression happens on a spectrum, and so should accountability. So there you have it, a nuanced review of the Me Too movement. From its origins, to media hype, to we'll see. Whilst I may have my doubts about the movement, there's one thing I know for sure. Things have to change in Australia, where one out of two women and one out of four men will experience sexual harassment during the course of their lifetime. According to the Bureau of Statistics, between 2016 and 2017, the number of reported cases of sexual assault actually increased by 8%. What does this mean? Well, it means that one out of five women and one out of 25 men will experience sexual assault during the course of their lifetime. So it will take more than a hashtag to do the real work that is needed. As Tarana Burke said in a recent interview, use the hashtag, but then let's talk about why and let's talk about what happens next. It is up to us to create the real and lasting change we want to see in our society.